Do you want a selfie? No thanks, but I do want to get into a spoiler-free review of VHS Beyond. It's the seventh installment in the long-standing found footage anthology franchise, and the fourth movie to come from this series' recent revival. VHS 94, 99, and 85 have all been big hits for its new streaming home, Shudder. Will Beyond be another zinger just like those? Well, let's get into it. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Killjoy Jake, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. I have been a huge fan of the VHS franchise ever since I stumbled upon that first entry many, many moons ago. It takes the Creepshow anthology format through a modern found footage framing device. It allows this franchise to explore older ideas in fresh new ways. It also helps that every single entry has a brand new set of directors, constantly keeping each entry fresh. VHS is a franchise that feels very punk rock due to its low budget and big swings in most of its segments, but its growing fan base has kept this series mainstream surprisingly. Although most of the original trilogy were underground hits, the new run starting with VHS 94 in 2021 broke a bunch of Shudder's streaming records. The franchise has become a flagship series for the streaming platform that has ordered a new movie every year since 94's success. 99 and 85 were no different, as they also became event movies for the streamer, breaking its own record with each new film. Impressive. Nice. Now this week, VHS Beyond hits Shudder on October 4th, and it might just be the best one yet. I am so grateful that I got to see this one early. Beyond is one of the most consistent entries in the entire franchise, just like VHS 94. I really enjoyed each segment, even the wraparound, which I rarely praise. Beyond goes back to the original franchise structure, where the vignettes are placed in between an interlude from a wraparound segment that the film is constantly cutting back to. In the past, the wraparound served as a way to give you a break in between each of the segments. And maybe you're crazy like me, and you like to pause the film, talk about the crazy cryptic BS you just watched with all your buddies, and then resume. Having a nonsensical wraparound segment gives you a reason not to hit the pause button. It was cool to see the franchise experiment with the sometimes mediocre wraparound segment in the previous two films. For instance, in VHS 99, that film's wraparound featured stop-motion toy soldiers clearly voiced by a teenager making crude jokes. <sighs> Admittedly, it feels really dull and pointless until these interludes lead directly into the penultimate segment of the film titled The Gawkers. And I ain't talking about that Gawk Gawk 3000, buddy. What are the kids calling it nowadays? Hawk Tua? Fuck, I'm old. The toy soldiers work as a thematic device for the segment, which I think is a really clever hidden detail. If you've seen that one, you might know where I'm coming from there. VHS 85, however, is the most obtuse film in the franchise with multiple segments being cut up throughout its runtime. The film starts off with David Bruckner's wraparound titled total copy that the film cuts back to on occasion, but they also cut up the first segment from Mike P. Nelson titled No Wake slash Ambrosia. The first half of Nelson's segment feels like a setup that we don't end up getting resolution for until two segments and a few more interludes later. It's really experimental and kind of ends up making the front half of the film feel a bit disappointing until that explosive back half. No shade towards Mike P. Nelson's No Wake, by the way. That's one of the best segments in that last film. It's just kind of weird how they cut it up, that's all. In Beyond, the wraparound serves as a mockumentary on alien encounters that's teasing real life proof of extraterrestrials. Did you feel the quotation marks around that real life there? In the usual fashion of these kinds of documentaries, they make you wait until the end to really see anything substantial. I can't spoil anything yet, but between some shocking cameos and a sick finale, this is without a doubt one of the better wraparounds from the entire franchise. It actually had a point to it, which in my book makes it a little better than some of the more nonsensical wraparounds we've seen in the past. I'm looking right at you, Viral. Jay Shield did a great job with this one. The first true vignette of Beyond is Jordan Downey's Stork. It focuses on a rogue police unit going after a mysterious baby kidnapper. Baby napper? It features some terrific Deadite-style creature effects, a surprisingly emotional angle to the madness, and all the disgusting blood and guts you could possibly want. There's something else to love about this short, considering its namesake and actor Dane DeLiegro, but I'll hold off from commenting on that until we can talk spoilers. Spoiler review coming soon. Stork is an excellent short to start this film with, which is a problem that 99 and 85 suffered from. Both of the previous films had media mediocre beginnings and strong finishes, which sounds like something you might type into the search bar of a certain orange and black website. Seriously though, Beyond starts with an insane sucker punch and never lets up. The last thing I'll say about Stork is that like many of the segments in Beyond, it captures what I love so much about this franchise perfectly. It does a lot well that we've already covered, but it gives you a few cryptic pieces of the puzzle with each new turn. You can find 
finally put the pieces together once something at the end happens, but until then, you're just waiting in the depths of this bizarre mystery. It's one of my favorites from this film and the entire franchise as a whole. Who knew the thanks killing guy had so much range? Excellent job, Jordan. Next up is Dream Girl from up and comer Virat Pal. Pal has made a few short films that I enjoyed over on his YouTube channel, especially Facelift. That one feels like an echo of the substance. And for those of you who have seen my deep dive, you guys know how much I liked that one. Dream Girl is about two amateur photographers who sneak onto the set of a Bollywood movie to get an exclusive. The one guy is crazy jealous, even obsessed with the so-called Dream Girl and the star of the picture Tara. Let's just say they get more than an exclusive when they accidentally get caught in her trailer. Dream Girl is a sharp commentary on the entertainment industry that features some big surprises and some really nice familiar staples from the VHS franchise. For instance, a portion of this segment is shot on much nicer cameras and kind of breaks the whole found footage thing, uh, kind of? Like, technically it still ends up becoming footage that is found, but if that was shot on like red cameras, that still counts, right? It also checks some of the usual boxes by featuring a ton of blood and a nasty creature design. Those practical effects rock. Dream Girl has an intriguing start because just like its predecessor segment, this one seems to have an emotional angle. I'd argue that this one doesn't really go anywhere though, unlike Stork. There's an emotional connection between one of our main characters and Tara, this jealousy angle that feels a little undercooked. Besides that though, pretty much every other element to Dream Girl delivers. For the new kid on the block, Pal put out an excellent segment here that feels very unique and incredibly inspired. I'm hoping this guy gets his own features sometime soon. I'm really impressed with what he can do behind the camera. Next up, up is Live and Let Dive, coming from director Justin Martinez. Formerly a Radio Silence member, Martinez worked on a lot of the VFX for the early Radio Silence projects. He's the reason Southbound, Devil's Do, and their original VHS segment, 103198, have such impressive effects. Justin has been doing a lot of the VFX work for the VHS franchise for a long time now, and finally had an opportunity to direct with this segment. That's not only the most original idea of the film, but a VFX showcase. Dive follows a group of friends skydiving for the first time. The plane suddenly crashes into a UFO as the group must fight for their lives against a bunch of pissed off aliens. Love it or hate it for its lack of story, Live and Let Dive is so ambitious you simply can't look away. There are definitely times with this segment where you can tell Martinez is showing off his versatility as a filmmaker, but that doesn't detract from the impressive segment he and Ben Turner have crafted here. They earned the right to show off a little bit with this one. I genuinely loved all of the set pieces and strange creatures we encountered here too. I'd also like to note that I really do enjoy VFX and horror movies. They often get a bad rap because of how impressive in-camera effects are, but I don't think people like Justin Martinez get enough credit. This is hard work to sit there and create all this, man. Just like the practical effects you guys all love. These effects are impressive, and there's no way you could have done this segment practically. I think the truth of it is, we just hate bad VFX. But when it's done well, you don't even realize that they're there. We all know that a lot of these movies and the Terrifier films use VFX to improve the practicals, right? This this narrative of VFX bad really needs to end, dude. People like Justin Martinez deserve to be celebrated. I'll get off my soapbox for this next segment titled Fur Babies, which is easily the most insane portion of Beyond. Written and directed by Christian and Justin Long, Fur Babies might just be my favorite segment from this entry for a few reasons. It has a ridiculous set of characters, a fantastically dark sense of humor, and it's sort of a new take on a less than desirable gross out movie. I've already said too much. This one features another memorable antagonist up there with the likes of Ratma, Mabel the Skullbiter, and other strange monsters from this universe. It's also easily the grossest entry in Beyond, which is another reason for it being my favorite. Ya boy likes his gross out horror. My favorite movie is The Fly. You guys don't give a f This segment does not take itself even remotely serious, which is another thing I really enjoyed about it. The way this one ends especially, you can just tell that everyone making it was cracking up behind the scenes. It's refreshing to have so many segments here that give off totally different vibes. Going into Beyond, I was expecting nothing but sci-fi madness, but we ended up getting a little bit of everything in this feature. It's the fact that we mixed in segments like Fur Babies and Dream Girl that makes Beyond feel eclectic and fun. It may not be as focused as previous entries that stuck to its central theme a bit more, but this one felt even more shocking for that same reason. You could never predict what was coming next, and for that, it might just be the best structured film of the entire franchise. Last, but certainly not least, is the Kate Siegel-directed, Mike Flanagan-written Stowaway. Featuring a very subtle yet terrifying twist, 
journalist, Stowaway did not go where I thought it would. It's about a journalist who documents strange lights in the sky hovering over the Mojave Desert that captures similar feelings to Phoenix Forgotten and the Blair Witch Project. It's also sort of a take on an old Twilight Zone idea, which I really appreciated. This segment just furthers my argument that Siegel and Flanagan have the Midas touch. Everything they do together turns to gold. Flanagan needs no introduction, as many consider him to be a modern master of horror. Mike usually tells ghost stories, but he writes a killer found footage segment too. I hope Kate Siegel gets more directing opportunities after this, because that aspect was particularly great as well. This one is really out there, and I think some will walk away from Stowaway a little disappointed, but it might just be the most thought-provoking VHS segment yet. What ends up getting set up here is truly terrifying and makes for one of the scariest vignettes in franchise history when you think about it. I was genuinely blown away by what Mike and Kate did here. You could already guess from that loose plot description that aliens would get involved, but it's so much more sophisticated than the previous alien-themed segments. I appreciated that throughout every extraterrestrial skit that Beyond features, none of them feel like they're standing on another's shoulders. They are all very unique takes on a slightly similar idea, proving yet again that originality is not dead in the horror space. To me, that's the biggest takeaway from the enigmatic VHS franchise that this entry exemplifies. There is so much creative juice in all of these movies, and I want to suck all of it out through the VHS teat. If you asked me to rank all of these movies right now, it would genuinely be a difficult task, considering how many great entries there are now. With more and more original and thought-provoking segments in the franchise, Beyond might just take the silver medal for me personally. 94 will always be my favorite, Hail Ratma, but this is a very, very close number two that blew me away. How many seventh entries in horror franchise can you name that are better than the original? I can't even think of another one besides this film. VHS Beyond gets a 9 out of 10 from me. F yeah! It's a shocking and delicate anthology flick that feels very rare. It's only on occasion that I can praise every segment from an anthology flick, as it so often comes down to one or maybe two that end up being great. Beyond just proves that the VHS franchise is one that can go on forever, while still delivering top-shelf quality due to its change in directors. Having fresh blood with each entry makes this series consistently exciting. You can never predict what will come next. Speaking of which, I'm sure Beyond is going to once again break some streaming records for Shudder, and once this one becomes another mega hit, I'm hoping to hear the announcement that an eighth installment is coming next year. Well, at least I hope so. VHS can go on as long as we still have excellent horror directors who want to make low-budget found footage shorts. I mean, just to throw a few out there, imagine Fede Alvarez, Coralie Farga, Damien Leone, what if they all did segments for the 8th VHS film? The only problem I see for the future of the VHS franchise is running out of subtitles. I'm hoping to hear the announcement that an 8th installment is coming next October. Get on it, Shudder. The fans want what the fans want, baby! Are you excited for VHS Beyond dropping on October 4th, which is literally this Friday? Leave your excitement down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.